Okay, so like I said before, we'll create new. And pick print. Go to more options where you get an A3. I'm going to change that to inches. And then choose create. So we have our artboard set up. I'm now going to go back to canvas and talk about the assignment. Yes? <coughs> I just now got signed in with my Adobe sign thing. So um, what would you like us to open? Uh, what, what, what would you like us to open up? Why did you print it, you said? Yep, print. Okay. An A3. An A3? So, and that's all here. If you go back to the assignment, I usually try to give you everything that you'll need to be successful with that assignment. Okay. And you're going to pick one single letter for this, like you saw all the cues repeated. Any letter you want to pick is fine. And then you're going to do a bunch of research. So you've got to figure out, A, where to get the fonts. So we talked about Google fonts before. And then you'll notice if you go back to the module, there's some resources in there. There are, you might have heard of Defont or Font Squirrel or a thousand and one fonts. I'm going to click on Font Squirrel. And I usually like to click out and go to the actual site rather than viewing it within Canvas. And you can search a lot of different fonts and they have down below some different classifications you can pick choose so I have like a little cheat sheet for you you still have to be like what the woman was talking about a good font detective just because they labeled it if something comes up like oh that doesn't look like what I saw and if you can't remember what you saw and you shouldn't really be able to remember what you saw besides a sans serif that just has no feet um, I would just google type classification and images will come up. What's hard about type classification is I gave you a condensed list, but there are other broader lists out there, so you have to use your best judgments to just reference back to my list. There's a little bit more that exists, but we didn't need to do so much. You just need to know that type classification happens and how to start seeing the little differences in the type on what makes them what, like what makes something, where's my list? Slash. So we'll go to, oh, this is the wrong course. It changed on me. Now you. I want to go to my dashboard. Oh. Interesting. I want to know what the difference between, you know, it's both of a serif, but what small details make it transitional? What small details make it modern? So th that's where you have to look at the little things to see where they feel different. So old style is a font or a typeface? Old style is a classification. So all of these, like old style could have, there could be a font named old style, but there could be 750 fonts that are an old style classification. So sometimes there'll be hints to what the classification is in the name, like Open Sans is a, is, is a typeface name, and then you have Open Sans Bold where it's a font. I will interchange font and typeface often. So sometimes there's a hint. So if it has Sans in it or if it has Serif in it, you know. But I'm asking you to look for a little bit more than just sans or serif. I'm asking you to look for old style and transitional. And that's where you got to do a little bit of searching. And you'll find examples on Google and you'll see what those are to just kind of cross check, cross check your work. Also, too, if you click on this typeface to see more about it, when you scroll down below, it gives you some more information. So they called this sans serif, and then they also in the tags tagged it as geometric, which is one of those other ones that you want to look for. They gave you corporate neutral paragraph 
wide. So it's like a wider font. It's a sans serif, good for paragraph type, corporate. So they just have other tags in there for people who are looking for more stuff. But you can sometimes get that specialty area within the broader classification, they'll have it there for you. Font scroll is the best. Defont and the other ones have some of the categories, but they don't spell it out with this tag. And you download and install the font just like you did for Google. What's interesting is here you'll see that it's offsite. Sometimes the offsite ones are a little bit harder. They trick you and they want you to download some something else. So you have to look for the, let's go through it. You have to look for the right download button. So if this one is offsite to download, so you can down, font, font sprint, you can download the demos. This one, they, they're going to want you to make an account. I sometimes don't. It depends on how bad I really want that font. If I'm working on a logo and like that's the font I want, then I make an account. Some of you ask how much money you're going to pay for the font and you put in zero and then it downloads it for free. So it can be tricky. That's why the Google fonts was pretty safe. Google fonts will also have all those classifications on it um, as well. But if you just go to one that's not off-site, that's just through font scroll, it saves it and then you unzip it and then you find it. And this has a lot to, if there's multiple ones, then you can select them all, holding that shift button and install font, and it should install all of them for you at one time, which helps. You may get a warning, and it's asking you to check it. One warning is fine. I've gotten ones where they give you two warnings, and two warnings, don't do it. So you'll check it, it feels like there's like two checks, check boxes, that's fine, but then if it gives you an additional warning, I would just move on and find a, find a different one. So that's how you'll download those and search for the different typefaces. So some of the things, that requirements, that your poster has to have the nine, nine of the same letter, showing these nine different classifications. You need to include a key of some sort. So on that sample, that small text on the bottom is how the key was displayed. And in it, it talked about maybe right to left. It looked kind of very like museum quality. Yours doesn't have to feel like a museum. You can do it in a lot of different ways. It'll be up to you. Um, the format and layout is up to you as long as your, port your poster is in portrait, which means it's tall. Um, it says let those creative juices flow. And when you have a point where you feel like, yeah, this feels like a good, a good, I can't go anymore on this. I feel like I'm done. Then you're going to print out a proof on the magic color. We'll go over that on Tuesday on the 11 by 17. You'll come up. I'll give you some feedback. And then we'll go from there. When, and then I'll, I'll set a time where we're going to put them all on up on the board. We'll do that critique before the final is due. You'll have time to fix it. Um, we may print this one out. It says print and mount. It depends kind of like where everyone's at with their, with their fees. So some design tips is less and more and to be careful with your aligning in space. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks in Illustrator on aligning type because it can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do just the click and let go that I talked about with the type tool. And I'm going to choose the letter R. You can do uppercase, lowercase, a mix of uppercase and lowercase. It's kind of up to you. And I am going to, let's go ahead. Um, let's see another little trick that's here as well. So if you click on character, nope, not here. It's in all the different spots. Is it not? When you click this, so when you click for more, over in your properties panel. There's something called filters. And if you click on filters, they have some classifications here. Now you have to hold to see what it's saying. So black letter was one of the ones that we needed. You can click and it'll filter out 
all the black letter typefaces that you have downloaded on your machine if they were tagged black letter. So if you downloaded it from somewhere else and it somehow in computer language didn't tell the computer that's that's what it was, then you wouldn't know. Sometimes I forget to clear my filters and I'm like, where did my typeface go? I can't find it because I forgot to clear, clear all and they'll come back. And this one you can tell would be a, a sans serif. Again, I still just have the classification, but not that, those further details. But I kind of want to show you aligning some things. So I want you to look specifically at this box around the text. This one's pretty good. It's pretty tight to how big the actual letter is. This, for example, has a lot of space on this side and a lot of space on this side. And sometimes a text box can be tight to the left and have extra space on the right and vice versa. So when you, this is pretty even, so it'll be okay. But let's say you were to select both of these and you wanted to align them to each other, which is to the selection and you use this middle alignment tool. Sometimes it doesn't actually align because it's aligning the text box. Let me see if I can find one that does it poorly. Let's see what happens there. So that's a good example. So do you see how it's much closer here, to the edge of this R, and there's a lot of space here? So if I have these fairly the same size, and I put them under each other, and I go, they look pretty aligned there just by eyeballing it, and I go to align it, it gets moved even more further over because it's aligning those text boxes. So when you know you have the typeface that you want, you can change the size after later, but you can't change the letter. So when you're just doing the letters, it's okay to do something that's called create outlines. So if you click on any of the letters or you can click and rubber band select multiple letters. You can go up to type and choose create outlines or you can right click and create outlines. Now it's just going, see how the text or the selection box got much tighter around the R where before it was much bigger. Now it's going to be just aligning that actual type and not the actual text box. Sometimes you can do it just with your eyeball just as good, but it's just some options when you're trying to align things. Maybe you choose a style where aligning isn't important. The fact that it's not aligned is what's making it a good design. And then when you label something, so let's say I'm labeling this as my black letter display, black letter, however I want to. You are not required to do it in the same typeface. So you, sometimes it works, but what I have found in this assignment, let's just eye drop this typeface and make it smaller. Again, always holding shift when I'm making these things smaller. If I hold shift and option, it will, what's happening? That didn't work. It usually will make it smaller in, oh, I didn't spell display right, did I? If I hold shift and option, there we go. It makes it smaller from the center. Oh, that is the Y, interesting. Yeah. So you don't have to have this be the same. You can choose like a plain sans serif font to kind of label everything. But again, that's up to you. Those just don't have to match. So the things we talked about, you know, using the type tool to click and select and then, you know, put in your letter. We talked about you can go to type or right click 
to create outlines if that helps with aligning. No, once that happens though, you can't change this letter around and you can't change the font. You can't change, it's now an object. So if, you, if you're not sure that that's the final typeface you wanna use, I can't do this once I create outlines. Um, so that's kind of just the little ticks and tips and tricks for this particular assignment. What I would do is you're going to be searching through a lot of different fonts to download. And you'll think you'll remember, oh, that was like grotesque and I'll remember that. Don't. I would get something to write down with or type it out, install it, go into Illustrator, type out the type, type out the name of the font that you used, type the classification so that you remember it because then you might change your mind later. So just some way to have that information as you're researching. Any questions? Yeah. You can use color. Yeah, this is kind of your freedom to show off to me a little bit. Just, just vector artwork though, no, um, no images. All right. Feel free to go ahead and get started.